Are you ready to experience a neighborhood that's not just a place to live, but a cultural phenomena? Made famous by the hippie movement in the 1960s, Haight-Ashbury was once the home to revolutionary and famous singers. Today, residents enjoy architecture, restaurants and boutiques, and proximity to nature, and the community that still has a bit of a counterculture vibe. If you're interested in seeing more about San Francisco, peace, love, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss another video. All right, now I'm gonna show you around, tell you a little bit about what it costs to live here compared to other areas of the city, and wrap it up with some neighborhood history. On the corner of Haight and Ashbury Street, sits a sign marking the heart of the neighborhood where the 1960s flower power blossoms. These days, colorful Victorian houses brighten the hillsides and the streets are filled with restaurants and boutiques. The Haight-Ashbury has the largest concentration of Victorian homes in the entire city. It was one of the few neighborhoods that was not impacted very much by the 1906 earthquake and fire. Victorians were built in San Francisco during the late 1800s and into the early 1900s. The earliest style was a simple, flat front Victorian, followed by the more ornate stick style, called that because of the stick-like decorations attached to the front. The last style was the Queen Anne, often with rounded towers and slanted roofs. For more on residential architecture in the city, check out our video highlighting the most common styles. During the late 1960s, San Francisco was home to some of the most famous 60s singers, and bands who created what was called the San Francisco Sound. They all lived in these Victorians. More on that in a bit. The neighborhood generally encompasses the area surrounding Haight Street, bounded by Stanyan Street and Golden Gate Park on the west, Oak Street and Golden Gate Park Panhandle on the north, Baker Street and Buena Vista Park to the east, and Frederick Street neighborhoods and Haight Ashbury and Cole Valley to the south. Haight-Ashbury is very walkable and has great access to public transportation, including several muni bus lines and our light rail system. With a more moderate to warm microclimate, there's a mix of sun and fog. For more on neighborhood transit scores, weather, cost of living, visit the neighborhood section of our website. To find spectacular views, head to the top of Buena Vista Park, the oldest park in San Francisco. It features secluded, winding trails and one of the city's few remaining coast live oak groves. The city view from the top is worth it. On a clear day, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, downtown, and the ocean. The Panhandle is a stretch of the park bordering the Haight-Ashbury that extends from the eastern edge of Golden Gate Park to Baker Street. It's lined with elm, cypress, and eucalyptus trees. Here you'll find people gathering and frolicking with dogs, a children's playground, basketball courts, and a biking and jogging path winding along both north and south edges of the park. The path is part of the Wiggle, which is a popular bike route, which minimizes hills and inclines. The Haight-Ashbury neighborhood sits on the eastern edge of Golden Gate Park. The park is vast and there's lots to do there. It's home to some of San Francisco's most visited attractions like the Japanese Tea Garden, the San Francisco Botanical Garden, and the De Young Museum, and the California Academy of Sciences. I will say there's a big difference between living in the city and knowing that you have access to Golden Gate Park and living on the park. My very first apartment in San Francisco over 20 years ago was situated on the park and I loved living there. Multiple times a week, I would run through the park and down to Ocean Beach, and I felt that my quality of life was really high as I spent time there. I have to say that I didn't have kids at the time, but I imagined that it would be so amazing to live on the park with kids as I spent so much time with my family in the park, but not necessarily enough time, if that makes sense. Hippie Hill is one of the areas in Golden Gate Park that was an important spot during the summer of love. It was a place to be if you wanted to listen to music by Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Jefferson Airplane, and many others. It was also a great spot for drum circles. If that's still your thing, then the best time to visit is April 20th during the 420 in the Park celebration every year. For more bus do's, check out our videos where we do a deep dive on Golden Gate Park. The Haight-Ashbury has murals galore, many of the colorful 60s variety. You'll see them as you stroll up and down Haight Street. Vintage and funky clothing shops and piercing and tattoo parlors mix with hip restaurants and boutiques along Upper Haight. Amoeba Music is a large independent music store that has been famous for decades for its huge supply of music. The Booksmith 
is one of my favorite independent bookstores. They host events and author readings on site and maintain a strong relationship with the surrounding community and support local writers and artists. If you're in need of art supplies, Mendel's is a long time family run fabric store with original selection. There's no shortage of places to grab great food and drinks in the hate. Magnolia Brewery is known for its organic bar food and a long list of home brews. The Parisian themed Zam Zam is a true San Francisco original and unlike any other bar that you'll find in the city. Hobson's Choice features rum specials, pouring fruity punches, in an old Victorian house setting with a loungy sofa seating. A fun fact is that this is the very first bar that I ever went to in San Francisco and drank my first mojito there in the early 2000s, and I'm so glad that they're still around. Cha 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 is a fun and boisterous eatery with sangria-related decor serving Caribbean-style plates and pitchers of sangria. If you want to cook for yourself, head over to Gus's Hate Street Market. It's a family-owned neighborhood grocery store with organic fruits, vegetables, plus meats, cheeses, and pantry items. There's also a Whole Foods in the area. All right, so let's talk real estate. What does it cost to buy a home here? And how much does it compare to surrounding neighborhoods? Most of our buyers looking in Haight-Ashbury are also likely looking in other neighborhoods that are centrally located with some sun, walkability, access to the park. Such neighborhoods would include Nopa, Coal Valley, the Inner Sunset, Inner Richmond, and possibly DuBose Triangle. Housing here has more condos and multifamily homes than single families. Since most of the single families in the neighborhood are quite large, the price differentiation between the two is also very large. There were only five single family homes that sold in the neighborhood in the last 12 months. All of them were Victorians, most of these homes were on the large side, which makes the price point also on the higher side. The range for a single family home in the neighborhood is between 2.8 and $4.35 million. The median priced home in 2023 was 1,089 a square foot and closed for 2.85. It was 3,100 square feet, had four bedrooms, five bathrooms. The most expensive home that sold was just under 4,000 square feet for just over 4.3 million. Buyers who are looking to spend a little less but still score a home in the area can expect to spend around $700,000 for a small one bedroom and up to one point nine for a three bedroom, three bath condo. The median sales price for a condo in 2023 was $1.5 million and it was a two bedroom, two bath priced right around $1,000 a square foot. Here's a chart that shows how much median prices compare for condos in surrounding neighborhoods. As you can see, Haight-Ashbury is actually attractively priced and pretty affordable in comparison. Nopa, which I did not list, is priced equal to Haight-Ashbury. As you can see, the sizes vary quite a bit. Coal Valley, Eureka Valley, and DuBose Triangle are all pretty tied close together for a slightly more expensive areas. Though Coal Valley and Haight-Ashbury have very similar weather, Coal Valley is considered more family friendly while the hate is considered a bit more edgy. Eureka Valley and DeBose Triangle have slightly more sun and are a bit more centrally located and have access to a bit more public transportation. Inner Richmond and Inner Sunset are also priced nearly identical to the hate and you get a further price reduction as you go out towards the outer sunset and outer Richmond. Both of these neighborhoods are considered a little further out and the weather is marginally more foggy. However, there are many neighborhoods surrounding the park where you still have access to walkability and public transit. I hope that you found this information helpful, but if you find yourself more confused than ever, just reach out to us. We have a process where we'll work with you one-on-one, -on -one. we'll hold your hand, through how to make these compromises and navigate different neighborhoods. As I mentioned earlier, San Francisco was home to some of the most famous 60s singers with bands who created what was called the San Francisco Sound. Many of the activists lived here as well. The rockers started moving into the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood in 1965 and 1966, and most were living here during the Summer of Love in 1967. The Grateful Dead lived in a house at 710 Ashbury Street. Janis Joplin lived several locations. Two of them were at 635 Ashbury and 122 Lyon Street. Jimi Hendrix lived at 152A Haight Street. The Jefferson Airplane bought the house at 2400 Fulton Street in 1968 for a mere $70,000. 
after they had financial success from their surrealistic Pello album. The mansion at 737 Buena Vista West housed a recording studio in the 60s where Jerry Garcia, Mother Earth, and the Steve Miller Band all did recordings. It's also famous for being the residence of Jack London, where he wrote White Fang in 1906. Whether you're considering a move to San Francisco or already live in the city, subscribe to our channel for more videos about attractions, neighborhoods, and the real estate market. Email us at hello at ruthchristian.com. We'd love to be your go-to real estate resource.